In this video, we're going to look at some quick worked examples of using a calculator in more complicated situations. We've got a range of calculations to do. What I'm going to do is use the Casio to work out each of these. So let's start with 6 squared minus 1.5. All we would do is type in the 6. We could either use the squared button or we could use the power button. In this particular case, I'm going to use the squared button and then I'd simply subtract away 1.5. So all I'm doing is typing it in as it looks now on the question paper. That gives me 69 over 2. If I wanted to put this as a decimal answer, I'd just press the S to D button. So that's going to give me 34.5. Often with these questions, we're asked to write our full calculator display. In this particular case now, we've got quite a nice number. But if we've gotten out a long number and you're asked to write the full display, you just go ahead and write it down. Often those questions then require you to round the answer to one or two decimal places. So let's put this on. This is going to be 34.5. So with that particular one, I could have used the power button. So I could have said 6 and then just simply inserted the 2. So for example, if this was 6 to the power of 4, we could have put 4 in. 6 to the power of 9 and then gone ahead and come out of the power. We can use these buttons to move in and out of the powers minus 1.5 and then we would have our answer. So we can see if we're asked to write down the full calculator display for that one, we'll go ahead and do that. We can go back in using the arrow keys to change these over. So if I wanted to go back to the square term, we would have our value. Okay, let's look at this one. We need the root of 27 plus 0 0.5. Now we press the root button and then we type in 27. We then need to come out of the root and we simply now press the button and we move across. We add to that 0 0.5 and we're going to have our answer. Our answer is given as 1 plus 6 root 3 over 2. We press the S to D button and we have 5.696 and so on and so forth. So if you were asked to write that down, all you do is write the full calculator display and then you might have to round to a certain answer. A common error with this one is pupils could put root of 27 and then not come out of now the underneath the square root and put plus 0 0.5. Now this is going to give me something entirely different. So what we need to ensure that we're doing is coming out and we just simply press the cursor key to move out. So plus 0 0.5 and that will give us that answer again. Let's look at this one here. We've got minus 1 multiplied by 3 to the power of 3. Here's the minus button, so we'd have minus 1, and we'd multiply this now by 3, and we would raise this to the power of 3. So I'm using now the power button, and we'd end up now with minus 27. Okay, let's look at the next one. The first thing we need to do is use the fraction button. The fraction button is just here. Then we're going to have 6, and we need to square that. So I can either use the square button, or I could use the power button. I'm going to use the power button just for something a little different. Then we need to come out of that power. If I don't and then press plus 1, that's going to give me 6 to the power of 2 plus 1, which is 6 to the power of 3, which we don't want. So we need to come out, and these now need to be the same size. The 6 and the 1 need to be the same size. If I was back in that power, the 2 and the 1 are. So that would be 6 to the power of 3. We want 6 to the power of 2 plus 1. And then what we do is press the down button. We need to come into now the denominator and we'd have 3 minus 4. That's going to give us minus 37. Let's look at the next one. We need the fraction bar again. This time we've got the root of 5. So I press the root for 5. We need to come out. We need to come out from underneath the root and press plus 2. Then we push downwards into the denominator and we're going to do 3 to the power of 3. That's going to give me this answer here. We press S to D to get a decimal answer. We can switch back between the two by just pressing those. So that one's done. The next one, we need the fraction bar. We need the square root of 3 and this time we need it all under root. 3 times by 6. We can now come out and into the denominator and we'd have minus 2. So we've got minus 2 and we end up now with minus 3 root 2 over 2, which gives us minus 2.12. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got 2 plus 
35 pi. Pi is down the bottom. We hit shift and pi is just here. So that gives me exactly what it looks like on the paper and I go ahead and press equals. So if we had now, let's say we were working out the area of a circle and we know that the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared and we had a circle with a radius of five, what we could do is five squared, five squared times by pi. So we can just simply put this in like so or we could just put five squared pi or we could put now 25 pi. Lots of different ways you can write it in. I prefer initially just to do this. That's what it looks like. Or you could have it the other way around. Remember pi times by five squared is exactly the same. We can simply do the multiplication any way around. So three times by two is the same as two times by three. These both give us the same value of six. So if we wanted to do that in the calculator, we could simply do 25 shift pi. And that would give us our answer, which is about 78. 78.53. So basic use of a Casio calculator with some more complicated uh, calculations to make.